Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here at Oracle Open World for Wednesday. This is day three, day four, depending on how you look at it. Day one was uh, Monday, day zero, Sunday. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com. Next is Mike Workman, senior vice president of Flash Storage Systems at Oracle. Welcome back to theCUBE. Right. Thank you. Great to see you. It's good fun. So today was under the hood day. Donatelli on stage, Fowler. This is where all the, the geeks get their inner geek going because there's a lot of hardware, <laughs> software, action going on. And there's a huge shift in the market. I mean, Dave pretty much painted the picture. Hey, we're in a new era. Client server is kind of dead or over. We're going to build on top of that. Flash is a big part of that. Yeah. But now you've got in memory. Is that kind of, how's that going to work together? Can you just tease that out for us, the future of Flash in general? Well, I mean, Flash is, is here to stay until something's better. You know, I mean, 3D Crosspoint, what's next after that? There's a lot of memory technologies out there. But I think that the key thing is, is that we seem to never really go back. In other words, um, you know, once if you get used to five-minute service uh, and somebody uh, serves you in six, uh, that's unacceptable. And when people get hooked on flash and the latency, the difference, because it's so dramatically different and the way it can accelerate apps, there's no going back. I love that. Getting hooked on flash, that's definitely a cube gem moment. I mean, people are <laughs> people are getting hooked on flash, right? I mean, talk about that because that really is the headline. People are hooked on flash and they want more. And what so what is that dynamic of why are they hooked on flash? on the latencies, what specific things beyond that, the benefits do they get on that? And then what's the next high for them? Is it is it the in-memory? <laughs> so what's that next addiction? I mean, because you're right, you're 100% right on that. People get hooked on it. Well, I think, you know, people, we don't wait well. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, no matter what society, global society, we don't wait well. <laughs> and uh, when, you're, when, you, when you go a, away from Flash, once you're used to it, you're waiting a long time for things. I mean, dramatically different, right? And so it changes your expectations, and the expectations are what what uh, we buy to. We buy to fulfill expectations if we're in building an IT data center to either serve our internal customers or, or the world, you know, our external. World. So is is disk the new tape, or do you think the Wikibon forecasts are a little too aggressive? They're too aggressive, yeah. and so I don't even give, know what they are. Give us some color. <laughs> <on that. Yeah. laughs> no, I mean I'm telling you, there, you know, you can't count out disk for where the petabytes that it's going to serve. It'll be ten to one. Right? If you look at, everybody has tried to argue this. I'm a, my product is a flash storage system, right? We build, I think, the, the fastest flash storage system in the industry, and it was built for Oracle by Oracle. <laughs> so it might be good for Oracle because we built it. Um, but the, I think that the key thing of it is, is that no matter how you look at it, I couldn't procure enough flash to store data on, the data that exists today and the data that will exist next year. There's not enough money for fabs. It's a $2, tri $2 trillion dollar, uh, ticket, by some estimates, to build fabs to supplant HDD. So that will not happen. So there's going to be a supply problem if, if in fact... A massive. And if you started today, it takes how long to build a fab? Two years? That's not happening. Yeah, so... <laughs> Well, at the capacity level that they need. It's two years for every fab, and times it, all the demand that's required. Yeah, so hence, two trillion dollar check. I mean, so what does that Larry mean? Larry doesn't have that. So what, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they have to sell his island. The US government, maybe. <laughs> no, they don't have it either. So, <laughs> They'd borrow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what does that mean for flash pricing then, then, Mike? How should we think about that? I think it's going to be, uh, it, you know, it'll continue to decline because uh, everybody wants to sell and there's competitors, right? But I don't think it's going to be a free fall of price because there's more than enough demand to get, you know, to uh, make the, the suppliers happy. Um, but I think that also for HDD uh, folks, it spells well for them too because there's only two suppliers of, of big volume left and people are going to need it. So, um, but there's things you can do with Flash, obviously, besides the fact that it's not spinning that you can't do with Oh, with amazing. HD. So I wonder if you could, we could talk about some of that. I mean, the, sure. the rate that you can, you know, uh, compress or dedupe, uh, the way you can share Flash out of a single copy, how is that affecting business outcomes? 
Flash changes the whole game. And the reason you get hooked on it is because applications, <clears throat> when, when you, if you give somebody uh, 50 petabytes of free storage, they, they somehow figure out how to use it, right? Always. And all of a sudden it becomes a requirement, right? I mean, that's the way, it, it, yeah. it works that way. You deliver somebody a component and all of a sudden they build solutions around it. Well, you can build things around Flash that you cannot build. If you take a storage system that can do two or three or 400,000 IOPS, how many uh, cloud customers can you put on that, like in the, on, on our FS1? A lot. You can't support that with an, an old-fashioned architecture using HDD. You can't get the density of customers per platform, which translates to cost, right? And performance yeah. and expectations and latency and all of that. So you get hooked on uh, the speed and the things that it can provide you, and then the in ecosystem starts building things that require it. And so that's why I say you can't go back, because the ecosystem now assumes that that latency is there. And it's, it's getting more and more. In our product, we did something, I think, really interesting. We made it not only good at what you expect from Flash, which is high I.O. and low latency, right? We made it really good at sequential streaming. Really good. And people say, what'd you do that for, video? No, <laughs> not for video. You don't need that. But what you need it for is when you're running a huge OLTP kind of a, a, a environment, a hundred Oracle databases all pounding away, and you need OLTP, you also have to run backups while that's yeah. running. And you can't run backups at 600 megabytes per second. It's one big stream. Six yeah. gig yeah. or 12 gig per second. Those are the kind of numbers you got to be talking about. So we did that, whereas the other guys are way off. I'm glad that. you said that, because Flash changes backup. The, the way we do backup today can't survive right. Flash. Right. And I got I got to ask you on the flash thing because there's two things that I see happening. One is, you know, they're going to use that. I agree, they're going to use up that space. It's either going to be, hey, we're going to store stuff. I'm lazy. I'm just going to put some stuff. Use that flash. Put some stuff. They'll figure it out later. Or it's really a mission critical app. They'll use it. Either way, one's like giving the teenage kids the car keys and they're driving too fast and you know they wreck the car. And the other one is just, I'm I got to move fast and I got a lot of technical requirements, systems requirements. So that brings up, okay, they're going fast on the deployment with the performance, they're hooked on it, they could be intoxicated, they could be legitimate requirements. Security becomes an issue because now if I'm just going to be using Flash and just throwing stuff out the disk, I might not be careful enough to say, hey, what's going on with my data? So how do you guys address the security question in the, in the FS well, with all this going on? I mean, I don't say lazy, but people are throwing stuff at Flash. You know, I don't want to, I'll get to it later, I'll manage it later, and then there's real requirements. But security, how does that fit in that? I, I think it's a fair question, and I think Larry's done a good job. I, I imagine Dave did an excellent job of, of talking about security in the Oracle software stack. But, you know, let's be honest. It needs to be everywhere. And as Larry said on Sunday night, it needs to be at the lowest part of your system. You can't leave it somewhere for, for fear of, of it not getting done correctly. It has to be everywhere, distributed and even at the lowest part. So in our Oracle uh, FS uh, system, we encrypt the data on the drive. Now you can use it with Oracle Database Transparent Data Encryption, too. You can use it with other applications that encrypt higher up the stack, fine. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. They can't steal your data at rest because it's encrypted on the drive. And it does so with zero performance loss. Most people, you explain will- Explain that, explain that. That's a huge issue. Well, You're talking about encryption now. Right. Okay, so you, take, you, What happens is, is when, when, when people talk about encryption in general, our competitors talk about, well, if you turn it on, we can encrypt your data for you. The problem is you can't dedupe it then. Right. It's encrypted. And another problem is they'll never show you the, the benchmarks or the performance metrics with, with encryption, encryption on yeah. because it sucks cores and software. We do ours in hardware, pure hardware, distributed in parallel, and no one sees it. It's transparent. If you turn it on or off, uh, you can't tell by looking at the performance, which is an awesome feature, and it's part of what Larry said. What about the dedupe you can, piece? You guys can dedupe it? You can't dedupe with encryption. Okay, no, so that's off the table. That's off the table. What we do instead of, of, of dedupe, like for Oracle Database, we use HCC. And HCC is really powerful layers of compression, depending on how deep you want to go and how hard you want to compact it and how much work you want to spend rehydrating it. The database CPUs can do that, and it cuts down net, network bandwidth and capacity that you use. But it's we're, we're Oracle, and 
when, when you're running an Oracle database, we trust them to know what needs to be encrypted and what, how it should be encrypted. They, so they can turn off the encryption in our system if they want to, but you don't have to. You can leave it on, it sort of doubles. All right, so I got to ask you, I got to ask you the cube question we've been asking everyone. Dave addressed it on his keynote. Uh, we'd love to look at the big changes, but you know, the management team at Oracle is pretty solid right now, very solid, great, great team. Dell now has acquired a team with EMC, but yet they're in, they're in a transition phase. With all this landscape changes going on, storage is still hot. We're seeing, seeing a lot of startups out, uh, startups out there, storage startups. Yeah. What's your take on this innovation? Was it going to be flash in the pan? Will there be viable <laughs> players out there? And because you guys are building some, a pretty high fence from a differentiation standpoint. Talk about that difference, your differentiation, inimitability versus the new guys on the blocks coming in and the changes at Dell EMC, if you want to comment on that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question and it probably deserves more time than we have. I'll try to cover the highlights. First of all, I, I ran a startup for uh, uh, 10 years and if there's such a thing as a 10 year startup. <laughs> but, <laughs> Before but, you got uh, your first customer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Michael Dell no. says he's running a startup. No, no, <laughs> but, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> definitions. But um, it's hard to, to, to fit yourself in the ecosystem of all, the whole software stack anywhere if you're just doing a component, right? And the component manufacturers for flash storage systems that really mattered, in my opinion, I, I don't mean to be mean, they've all been bought by the big players who are going to attempt to build an end-to-end -end solution. But if you look at the, the layout, the landscape today, the only uh, real people that have a, I mean, to me, Oracle sort of stands head and shoulders above everybody else in terms of having all the pieces. I mean, Larry's been on this for 10 years. People thought, you know, as usual, some people said he was nuts. You know, he's, he's actually investing in hardware. He's, he's building microprocessors and operating systems and switching gear and all this stuff, right? Why, why everyone else is divesting of these components, yeah. right? And he's building them. Right. The and old he, man's lost it. He just loves tinkering, but. But you know, <laughs> I, I never bet against him. This, this guy, you know, he's got a plan because what he sees is that people don't have the time or the inclination at the rate of change, the way things move, to build piece by piece anymore. You can't, you know, who has the time? I can't even hardly put together a home stereo system by myself. I mean, I, I know what I'm doing. I used to design that stuff, but for God's sake, it's pieces and work and, IT managers don't want to become this anymore. It's the old best of breed. So what he's building is the best of breed integrated together, seamless between Better the cloud and the on-premises uh, solution to make them look transparently, uh, you know, the same, whichever one you elect. I mean, all of that stuff, going at that as a component manufacturer is tough. Yeah, so let's take like a pure storage. They got women publics, they got evaluation, and then these other stuff. Are they, then they're building just a feature or they say best of it's breed. It's a tactical solution. And it's, it, you know, it, it was brilliant for them, so I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want to throw rocks at people. Yeah, great little, great big business now, or, you know, valuation-wise. Fantastic for Scott Dietzen, right? It's, yeah, you, yeah. Love, you love to see that. We, you're here at Silicon Valley, but can guys like that is, you reach is, uh, breakout velocity? I don't know. The problem is, well, I mean, he's got a ways to go, right? I mean, yeah. you know, unless you consider that the IPO, but if you if you want a profitability, well, no, you've got a ways to go. Well, no, you're to make one, yeah. something's got to give, yeah. so you got to get that breakout velocity. Yeah, so. I, I, I think, I mean, the real problem is is that peop, everybody's made their play, and that's a tactical solution. As it becomes integrated, as we've done at Oracle, into your whole stack, and you've already got it, you know, there's a lot of disadvantage to going and sort of disintegrating yeah. and going and buying some other solution and trying to fit it into the whole puzzle. It's just a flash. We all we know it changes everything, but it just doesn't seem as disruptive as everybody thought it would be. I mean, do you feel disrupted, Oracle, because of flash? No, you're we embracing it. We started working on it right? five years okay, ago. Okay, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, though? But EMC, the big <laughs> displayer, that, well, I don't think flash is the reason they're getting disrupted. There's other factors there. It's more cloud, right? So... Cloud's disruptive. I think everybody, even though they started working on it, they weren't all sure what they were working on. <laughs> right. Let's play music. Just say cloud. Let's Keep play, saying it. Yeah. Mike, let's, let's play musical chairs. So the, in the flash business, there's been a lot of consolidations going on. What to your point earlier, when the music stops, if you're just a component and the music stops and you're not in a chair being bought by somebody else or have fortified market position, 
you're going to be left standing and you're done, right? So what are those chairs? What's the musical chairs uh, model going on in Flash right now? Because obviously the integrated stack makes a lot of sense. You saw Amazon doing it with their stack. Uh, you guys have it here, integrated stack platform and integration as a key part of it. Engineered systems, um, we like it. But where's, what's the chairs like? What's the music? The music will stop. I, I believe there'll be a scale point where the components. <laughs> the music never stops. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I okay. pretty. The, okay, the so chairs may the change. Cha okay, the chairs may pull up. <laughs> but what chairs are left? There's a lot of people walking around the chairs right now. There's, a, so. there's, there's more consult. There's, there's fewer, fewer and fewer chairs. I think, right? There's consolidation going on. We know you, you see it every yeah, day, yeah. and it's got to be fascinating. It is to me. Yeah, we love it. It's great for our business. But the music does never stop. But I mean, like, <laughs> well, there's the cloud chair. There's yeah. the integration chair. Yeah. There's the commodity chair. Well, uh, how, let's let's go do it another way. If you're an integration chair and you don't have a cloud, There's, you don't have you a don't chair. Have an integration chair right? <laughs> you don't have a chair. Yeah, chair, right? And I think uh, you know Dave Mark Hurd's made that point uh, very clearly that if you're a, a public IT company and you're in you you, you want to be here ten years from now, if you're not in the cloud, you're done. That's an interesting thing to think about, because how many companies out there maybe just killed their cloud? How many companies out there aren't thinking that way? They're trying well, to survive in the old model, yes. and that chair's going to go away. You don't have a cloud. Yes, I agree. You've got to play in the commodity chair, right? And that's isn't that what Michael Dell's doing? He's saying, all right, we don't really have a cloud. Now, I don't know. Forget, forget EMC for a second. The strategy for Dell was always sell to the cloud. Okay and make 19% gross margins. Used to be in the disk drive business. You make a little bit of money there. All right. <laughs> it's a strategy. It's, okay. That's not Oracle's strategy, but it's a strategy. Uh, you know, Oracle's strategy is to integrate, up the up, value up the stack. It's not volume. Top to bottom, baby. <laughs> right? Yeah. So Amazon, we know what their strategy is. Google, Microsoft can compete with that. You're not trying to take Amazon head on, even though you'll price to Amazon head on. Well, in some aspects, yeah. Right? Yeah. But the strategy is not to go like this head on with yeah. Amazon. Well, we, uh, Amazon per se, we, we're trying to, uh, to be the low cost supplier. I mean, Larry's made that clear of last year's Oracle Open World. For infrastructure. Because you can't, you can't do it unless you, you're, you aim at that. Uh, you may not have to hit it exactly, but you should try. And if you, you know, you should try to be the best. Okay, but so what if you didn't have database and, and applications and middleware? That would not be as interesting a strategy. No, it'd be horrible. Yeah. I, the, the integrated means all of the stuff that people want to run. It's about the application at the end of the day. Right. Nobody, I mean, I'm like, I supply infrastructure, right? They just want it to run. They want it to be secure. They want it to be reliable. They want it to be really, really fast because that's part of the cost equation, yeah, as cheap. everybody has pointed out. They want all of that stuff, but people don't buy a disk drive or a flash drive. They don't care about that. They care about the IT results, yeah. right? They care about the applications. They care about running their business. And we've said this for years, but the thing of it is, is it's more and more true every day. If you, if, nobody knows what's in this. <laughs> and most people don't care. <laughs> Yeah, and, it and, works. And, it works better than the, the, the and other. And that's two. the whole thing. They just don't care. They want it to work, and they want to get what they get. They want to know how to get over to the end of Howard Street. That's what they want. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> on our on our post keynote wrap up that we got syndicated on Oracle.com, Dave made the comment: "You're either a car maker or a car dealer," quoting Scott McNeely's famous line. And then one of the analysts, Dennis Hallis, said. Yeah, Oracle's now the Tesla, which kind of brings up a good point. There are cars, older cars, and then game-changing cars. It looks like a car, but it's different, and it's winning. Tesla's winning. Yeah. And, and so in a way, I feel like this, for Oracle, is the kind of Tesla model. There's new components, is reconfigured, engineered differently, and runs better, safer, more economical. People love it, sports car. How would Just you plug it in. How would you describe, if it was a Tesla, what are you guys doing that's more Tesla-like? that's different than the old way. How would you summarize that? Well, in the case of flash doors, there's less moving parts. You know, we, we got rid of some of the motors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. It's quiet, it, like it's, a Tesla. <laughs> it's quiet, yeah. Well, actually, go down to the base of the uh, elevator. We have a private cloud appliance, right? Running with an FS, or, our flash storage system. It's sitting there, and if you walk behind those boxes, you can close your eyes and you can identify the flash storage system. 
And the reason is because you could just feel the cool air blowing over you relative to the heat generated by <laughs> some of the monsters we're sitting next to. <laughs> it's amazing. Mike Power, Workman. security, whatever. It's all awesome. Mike Worker, Senior Vice President, thanks for coming on and sharing your insight and color into the, into the flash. I'll give you the final word. Over the next 12 to 18 months, what kind of movement in the flash business are we going to see from a technology standpoint? What's the big trend that you will be riding? I think the latency push is going to go faster and faster, harder and harder towards lower latency. And there'll be more and more options and tiers within the flash tier, memory tier, whether they be alternatives provided by Intel or others, that allow us to get to latencies that are normally only seen in direct attached server storage. And I, I think that that's going to happen, right? There's also going to be an acceptance that it might be better to have this all-flash tactical solution, which we have a product, the all-flash FS1, or to also have same software, same API, same control, everything, the ability to also, yes, take advantage of disk in your data center because it's a reality and you're going to need it. Why would you want two products to manage it? And I think people will stop the, once they realize you're in the 100 microsecond latency phase, they'll stop the complaining about the fact that they see a disk somewhere in your data center. If you need it, it's a tool, you use it, yeah, right? And I, I think that that's, that reality is going to shrink it, uh, sink into everybody. Security is definitely a thing, and, and we'll see that. I, I, I uh, that would be more of the same. The chairs keep moving, though. The music, music, chair, the music will never stop, but there, the chairs are moving away. May stop Mike, for some. <laughs> Mike Workman, as always, uh, very colorful, very technical. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing your insight with us. This is fantastic. This is theCUBE live on Howard Street, where we shut the streets down. Actually, not us, <laughs> Oracle does. <laughs> the 60,000 attendees. We are rocking it here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Thank you.